Hello friends, it's me Chenwin Koder. This is the ninth chapter in the Java multi-threading tutorial series and in the previous chapter we talked about implementing synchronization using synchronized keyword. We also talked about the requirement of synchronization and what are the problems we face if we don't synchronize the code with shared objects. So in this chapter we are still talking about synchronization but using a different technique in the previous chapter we used the synchronized keyword and in this one we are going to use locks in java so if you look at the lock there is a java.util.concurrent.locks.lock class which is an interface which can be used for synchronization so lock lock equals then we need to create a lock and the standard implementation is called new re-entrant lock and you can see that there are two methods available i will talk about the fairness in a moment first let us talk about creating a simple lock like this it is very very important that this lock must be shared between the threads so if i create a lock like this that is local to the class it won't work because we have to share these logs between different threads so we have to make it static so once we make an object static it will be shared between its instances so that is fine we have a shared log right now now previously we used synchronized keyword here instead we can use log dot log so what this will do is this will acquire a log object the thing is once you uh, this log dot log will be allowed for only one thread at a time so if two threads are coming and asking for the log at the same time only one of them will be granted to access inside this log block the rest will wait at this line so we acquire the log and if you look at the documentation of free and unlock you will see that it it is mandatory to unlock a log if you acquire a log and do not unlock the log then the next thread will go on waiting forever it is called starvation and we should we should we always unlock a log once it is acquired so what i'm going to do is i will acquire the log then i will go inside a try statement and execute whatever i want that has to be synchronized then in the finally method i will unlock the log so here i can unlock the log using dot dot unlock so so we acquired the log then we unlock okay so this is the replacement of the synchronized keyword now let me run this program so synchronization and you can see that names the thread zero first acquired the acquired the lock actually it is not names it is lock let me run the program and show that again so lock first was acquired by thread zero then it printed hello completing this block then it unlocked then this thread one the second thread acquired the log it will be more clear i think if i add one more state one more s out here lock unlock by then we will get thread name so get thread dot current thread dot get name okay now let me run the program again and you can see that first lock acquired then we did the processing we unlocked then the next thread acquired the lock and so forth so, so on and so forth so that is how the synchronization works with logs now the most important question is why do we need this kind of logs when we have the synchronized keyword and it is one of the best questions in stack overflow regarding logs and you can see that someone asked why use 300 log if you can synchronize it the answer is you can lo use logs synchronization logic from different method as you can see that from the full method we acquired a lock then the bar method we provided the unlock that is not possible with synchronized keywords since synchronized ha code has to be within one block we cannot have extra codes there so for example here i can move this code somewhere else. please lock i can i can create a method like this place lock and then i can acquire the lock from here then i can do the processing and i can 
unlock it from here or I can move this unlock method to another function. So that is the advantage of using this lock. Now coming back to the first thing when we talked about the constructor we said that there is a fairness parameter. So regarding the fairness it is for uh, the, let me show you with an example let's say that there are five threads executing so first thread requested then second thread requested the log then the third thread requested the log like that when it goes on like that if you set the fairness to true then they will acquire the thread in order so first first thread will acquire it then the second thread will acquire it then the third third thread will acquire it. So it will go on like that if fairness is set to true. So let me show you one more article regarding that. The fairness, the re-entering lock constructor offers a choice of two fairness option, create a non-fair lock and fair lock. And threads can acquire locks only in the order which they were requested with fair locking. So that is the concept. If you provide fair locking, then the locking will be acquired in the requested order. Okay, now let me just run this program and make sure that it is working as expected. And with fairness policy, thread zero, then thread one, and it is working pretty well. So thank you guys, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you very much.